Hey everyone, it's Katie and this is My Life in Beds. Today I'm going to talk to you about my history with gum fragility and gum recession. This is something that I didn't realize was related to my underlying vascular Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome or VEDS genetic diagnosis or genetic condition until after I had tried to have this issue fixed. I think I'm gonna start this story back in maybe, I think it might've been like 2011 or so when I first noticed that this was an issue. I love eating dill pickles. I like just the regular kosher dill pickles. They're one of my favorite snacks and I really don't eat them every day, but at one point I was, and that was maybe 2011. When I bit into a pickle one day, I felt the front of my, like this tooth right here, I felt the gum slide down. It was bleeding and it was very uncomfortable and I looked at it and it was super far down from where it was supposed to be on the tooth line. I went to my new dentist and when I told him this story, because he noticed the gum recession on that one tooth, I told him it was because I bit into a pickle and that it like slid the gum tissue down. And he was just kind of like, okay. He didn't believe me, <laughs> which, you know, it's kind of weird to go into a dentist and say, hey, I bit into a pickle and it pushed my gum down. I don't think that that is supposed to happen. So he probably didn't think that I was serious. And maybe it was already there and I just didn't notice it until that time, but it really felt like it was pushing the gum tissue down. So from that point on, I became very, very careful about eating things like pickles or apples. Um, and I, I still eat them, but I try to be very careful when I bite into them, not to like bite into it in a way that pushes that tissue down. Kind of weird. Fast forward to 2013, I'm back at my regular dentist and they tell me that my gums are severely receded. The tooth like in the front here was like six, I think it was six millimeters or however they measure it below the gum line. They take this little measuring tool and they go and they like put, give a number to each one. So it might be like one, one, two, one, three, six. <laughs> Five, like all the ones in the front here were severely receded, as well as the canines up here and a couple other teeth up in this area. They recommended that I see a periodontist and I did. He recommended that I do this gum recession surgery. We didn't know why I had this gum recession. At the time I was a smoker, which I quit years ago. They kind of thought maybe it was related to that, but a genetic connective tissue disorder never really crossed anybody's minds at that point, I don't think, because it was like off my radar for sure. The periodontist decided to use a graft and he used a graft on the bottom layer of the gum line down here. And it was supposed to help grow back the, the gums up to the point where they were supposed to be because they were very, very low. We decided that we would come back for the, for the top teeth later because it was very expensive and I could really only afford the bottom one. It also just felt like a lot. And it was like, we'll just do one and then we'll come back and we'll do another and just get it all covered eventually. Because these ones weren't nearly as bad as the ones down here. I have this surgery and I have a very hard time fasting. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else has that issue, but I am very, very connected to meals. I love to eat and I had to fast. Like I couldn't have any solid foods after the surgery for a little while. So I had a smoothie and it was very painful. It was very hard to come out of that surgery and then be able to eat anything or even like the smoothie was difficult to like suck up through the straw. I remember crying about it because I was so hungry, but and a smoothie just wasn't cutting it. I think after a few days, I was able to eat solid food. And this is just a funny story about this whole thing that just kind of gives you a peek into my personality and my emotional connection, I guess, with food. Once I was able to eat, we got like my favorite sub from I think Subway or Firehouse at the time because it was college and I had no money. And we also got 
like my favorite soda. And they came in these little packs of like six that were in that, you know, those little plastic little things that you you really should cut up before you put in the garbage. Does anybody know what those are called? I don't know what those are called, but you know what I'm talking about. It comes time to eat and I am so excited to eat solid food. I cannot stress enough how excited I was to have this hot sub and this soda. I was mentally prepared to have a hot meal for the first time since the gum surgery. We get it all ready. I go over to the fridge. It's like up here and like the soda is like up here on this shelf up here and I'm short, I'm only five feet tall. I go to pull the soda out of the thing and it's not coming out. So I am pulling, I'm pulling on it, I'm pulling on it, and the soda comes out and whaps me in the mouth right here, and my gums start bleeding. I put the soda down, I go over to the sink, I'm like, I've got a paper towel, I'm trying to blot it, and I am crying. Like tears are falling down my face. And my partner comes over, and he's like, are you okay, are you okay, are you okay? Because I think he thought that I was really upset because I was bleeding. So I'm sobbing and I say, I just wanted to eat my hot sub. I was so ready to eat solid food. I was not even upset about the gum thing. I just wanted to eat and I was so hungry. So I have a very hard time with fasting and especially if it's something like that where it's several days where I can't eat solid food. That was really, really difficult for me. I am a little bit ashamed that I have this problem because it's definitely a minor issue compared to what other people deal with, but it really, really, I have a very hard time when I can't eat solid food. Fast forward a couple of years, the gums had already receded again. Not as severe as they were, but definitely it's, it's significant. We decided to watch it and see if it gets worse and be really careful with it. You know, I wasn't smoking anymore. I wasn't doing things that should make it an issue. I take really good care of my teeth. I brush my teeth twice a day. I floss my teeth every day because I am so worried about having these this gum recession come back and be an issue because I hated not eating, really. <laughs> In 2017, when I figured out that I had VEDS, this was one of the things that made me think that a connective tissue disorder was very likely. And it was one of the things that I used to convince the geneticist to send me a genetic test. At that point, they decided to send me a genetic panel because I told them that the gum recession had already come back. I was likely to need surgery again, which is, you know, 2017 it had been four years and the dentist is really watching this issue for me because they are very severely receded down here. I never got these ones fixed because the other surgery didn't pan out the way it was supposed to. So it kind of seems like maybe it wasn't worth it. Um, I had had the neck pain. I had all these physical features and I could definitively say, I really think that you missed this diagnosis and sent me a genetic test. When I met my dentist, when I moved out to Washington, it was really odd because he also said that my gums were translucent, which I thought was just like, I met him at a time when I suspected the diagnosis. I was waiting on the genetic test results. I was 99.9% .9 sure they were going to come back positive. I have my first checkup with this dentist and he's going through and talking to the nurse about what she should write in my chart that he's observing. And he writes down all of the, the gum recession down there, like the different numbers so that we can monitor it. And then he says, her gums are very translucent. And that was the thing that made me, it pushed me from 99.99% to 100% sure that this test was gonna come back positive for VEDS, which did in 2017. But it was just very, very interesting to me. When it came back positive, that dentist told me that I was like question 220 on his medical exam or board exam or something. And that was the only time that he had ever seen anybody like me was this question on the exam. I think it's very cool that the dentists that I meet now like really understand the significance of having a connective tissue disorder. If I ever have a new dentist and they mention it, they ask me if I'm brushing too hard and everything. I say, oh no, I have a connective tissue disorder. And they're like, oh, you really can't do much about that other than what you're doing and you're doing a great job. So we just monitor it and make sure that I don't get any cavities. We're very, very conscious about it and we're keeping an eye on it to make sure it doesn't develop further. This next issue really isn't related to my gums, 
but I get huge blood blisters on my tongue from uh, like either, I can't tell if it's salty foods or just like rough chips or something. Sometimes like a piece of toast will do it. I'm very weird about eating toast. If it's very toasty, it doesn't go well for me. What I've learned is that this diagnosis has so many effects across my body that I know have not been studied fully. The blood blister thing is something that I've noticed and it's just kind of clicked in my head that this is not really probably an issue for people who don't have a connected tissue disorder, but the gum issue is definitely tied to a connected tissue disorder. That's my story on my gum recession and I guess my blood blisters too. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. It'll let you know when I have new videos on my life with vets. If you have vets too and you have this issue, like reach out to me in the comment section. Let me know. I think it's so fascinating that this affects so many parts of the body and it's just an issue that we shouldn't feel isolated about, I guess. Anyway, that's it. Everybody have a great day and I'll talk to you soon.